Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So uh, when we saw this one, we were immediately jumping on this. We thought we were done for the night, but no, you know, again, these these are absolutely totally different times that we are in right now. Well, I, I mean, it felt kind of funny this morning. We were looking at earthquakes and I kind of noticed they're they're all over. A lot of them are over five and usually they're, you know, like fours, 4.1, 4.2. And, and they were above fives. And I kind of thought that's just a little bit weird. I wonder if there's something building. Hmm. Well, yeah, absolutely. And as we've shared with you guys, because, uh, again, most most of the people watching the videos have been with us a long time totally expecting this and this would be the area that I would f feel we would f see the first bigger ones uh, this is Taiwan 7.5 quake some calling it 7.4 and this one we'll have to see uh, what damage uh, really is there's multiple buildings that have collapsed or partially collapsed uh, this is an area that is ready for big quakes, and so it's very, very well constructed. If you had something like this in some other areas on the planet, you would have a lot more uh, damage and devastation. Uh, thankfully, they are prepared for these type of quakes. But at the same time, these times are just going to be totally, totally different than anything we've ever seen in our lives as I do feel we will see the big ones this year. That is totally my gut feeling. And when I say big ones, m multiple big ones, Cascadia, San Andreas, and the New Madrid, as well as more than likely uh, somewhere over in Israel, Lebanon, and I wouldn't be surprised, Italy and Rome. I, I do think this is the year of the great quakes, and I know that we said that um, before we even hit 2024, this is going to be known for two things. It's the year of gr great quakes and also the year that World War III uh, started. So, of course, we want to send out our prayers and best intentions to everybody over there. As you can see right here, so this is the original uh, USGS calling it 7.4, 34.8 kilometers deep. Then we had a 6.5 aftershock, 11.8 kilometers deep, and a 5.7, 10 kilometers deep. There's always a chance that there could be also a bigger one, that even the 7.5 is more of a 4 shock. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. There was earlier, as we were, let's just check these out here, 6.2. This is the one I saw earlier. Uh, 6.2 over in the Mariana Islands as well. You could feel things are, are building. And, you know, Alaska, we're, what would I expect next? Um, it could move up to Japan, Kamchatka, which is this part of Russia over here, or into Alaska. And it could also go across into uh, the Cascadian or San Andreas area. I kind of feel that it's probably going to go more on a north northeasterly course as far as the energy transfer goes. But we'll see. We'll definitely see. This this was here first, the 6.2, and then we had the bigger ones. You know, we're going to just be barraged with one thing after another in these times. I, I am remembered in Nostradamus's words, and I do think this is the month of April that he was talking about when he said great disasters will be made in April and great people will be ridiculed. So a lot of them are geopolitical. Then he also said, but for, I believe it translates to two of them or a couple of them. And I think those are more like the ones that we're going to perceive as natural disasters. I think April is the month that we are going to see the war uh, get hot. As you see these people writing it out. And, you know, again, this is Taiwan, so they're, they're used to shaking. And I don't see anybody panicking. They're just probably quietly doing their prayers. And here you see people watching from a distance. You know, it is a, a little bit different world out there because, yes, there are so many um, scooters and motorbikes, as you can see that one in the distance there that was heading down. You know, 
this is something none of us want to hear. And let me uh, put the sound up. That's one of the creepiest sounds you could think of, isn't it? <laughs> you know, when I lived in the desert, we had one of those, and it would go off, I think, at like 10 or 11 o'clock every night. So it's not super foreign to me, but I, I do remember it clearly. And even even though we knew that it was for like curfew or something, we knew what it was, it always felt yucky. It always felt yucky. It just has a yucky vibe to it, and it's so... I, I don't know you know I mean we have this things going on we have the eclipse coming up I think things are just gonna kind of ramp up um I'm really not expecting anything until like after the eclipse or just maybe day two or before day two after I don't know but I think everybody needs to have a a good plan um in case you're cut off from from whatever it is you might need for a couple of weeks yeah, absolutely. And and this is, again, the area. So this is on the eastern side of uh, Taiwan. Uh, and, you know, in these times, you have to expect the unexpected. And then at the same time, I think there's a lot of us that have a pretty good idea of what to expect. Uh, there is a tsunami warning up. They're saying tsunami waves of anywhere from three to nine feet are expected uh, to be a possibility around Taiwan and also in Japan at this time they don't think it would affect the United States that would have to be a, a terrifying feeling to be up there and seeing the building tilted like that so again uh, evacuation advisory for Okinawa areas after this quake and so Japan is issuing an evacuation advisory for coastal areas in the southern prefecture of Okinawa Again, it could be nine foot waves up to that hitting that area. As you see this, everybody is, is jumping on this right now. U.S., Canada, West Coast, Hawaii, American Samoa, Samoa not expected to see any significant tsunami waves. Uh, again, they're not expected to. Flights into Naha and Ishigaki diverted to mainland due to ongoing tsunami warning. And then a couple of other things I just wanted to mention. Uh, largest U.S. fresh egg producer halts production at Texas plant after the bird flu was found in chickens. About 1.6 million laying hens and 337,000 pullets were culled. This is, the again, the food chain uh, is being completely decimated it's it's a full fledged attack on on the food supply system and here in canada it, it's getting close to uh the point of no return you still have trudeau out in public but man they are screaming and yelling and swearing and he has to be feeling like his life is getting it to be in danger. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of guards and security. But to say that he is not loved is an understatement. And as Cindy said, come 2025, none of the leadership that has been in place uh, going back to the plague upon the land, none of them will dare step out in public because people will have had enough. And if they are stepping out in public they will actually be taking their lives into their own hands and even if they have a hundred uh security agents there to protect them it probably won't be enough with all the events that are going to go down or they have scheduled to go down the rest of this year so i would play this but there's a lot of swearing there uh, things are getting hot and heated this is again the time to be prepared and this guy is just he's all prepared says everyone in Los Angeles when the earthquake trends, but it was in Taiwan. No, now is not the time when you sleep. Not at all. And, you know, I, I again, uh, I would be very, very prepared. Anybody along the coastlines, after seeing this one, the likelihood of something happening in Cascadia and the San Andreas area is, is going up in my mind. 
But this is exactly what I expected to uh, happen. Something very, very significant, like a mid seven or higher. And then seeing something more than likely in, in Alaska, possibly over on the Russian side in Kamchatka, or it might not get that far. It might trigger something larger in Japan first. Um, I, I am still kind of expecting uh, that this is m maybe after the eclipse, uh, it, just from the energies and it's just a hunch, um, but I do think that we're getting close, and I do think we'll see the Great American uh, Earthquakes, the Great American, meaning Cascadia go, San Andreas go, and New Madrid go, um, in this year, and more than likely uh, in the upcoming few months. You know, I mean, what, what can you do? You have to have a plan. You have to be ready. Um, do everything you can to take care of your yourself, your pets, those that are relying on you. You know, make sure you have diapers, uh, formula of some kind, uh, definitely different kinds of food. We've talked about that over and over about getting the food that's like non-GMO. You don't want those GMOs in your body if, if you're under a lot of stress because that's just going to bring inflammation. We have a lot of uh, family members all over the place so we're definitely casting out our love and protection and I hope you guys would too um, send love and protection out to everyone who's who's going through this now I think it's going to be a little bumpy for a while sometime after the eclipse this is kind of what I'm thinking and keeping an eye on everything and it just the activity is so I mean it just seems really rampant right now over there on the, on our west coast and then we have we have this energy coming up here and bouncing off there like you know like a ping pong ball table you know kind of energy that's going to irritate and aggravate that's that's my concern yes absolutely and uh, one of our most beloved friends and uh, family members is on their way they've left the greater los angeles area and uh, they're heading towards the center of the country and as you know we've shared with you guys what the message was that we got um, so again I you know everybody's in a different circumstance and if you are going to stay in the big cities and especially in the coastal areas you can create your own pockets of protection just by your frequency so putting out your prayers asking for help and guidance you have to ask in order to receive and really honing that inner tuition and that inner voice so that you know I mean sometimes it could be as simple as don't take the usual route home you know why not you know, don't question things like that when you get those little things that come through and there's you know you make a lane change just before you normally would just listen and be aware uh, and and know your surroundings in these times as well source bless and namaste Namaste.